No matter what type of cabin I'm cruising in, I always do a series of checks the minute I get in. They have unlocked perks, they have even got me upgraded and certainly made the cruise so much better. You should do these too. Before you do anything, decide if the cabin is right for you. Now this cabin is right for me because I booked and chose it myself. So I made sure it followed all my usual rules. Cabins on either side, cabins above, below, and opposite me. So I'm completely encased and the chance of getting disturbed by noise or loud venues or whatever is very low. Now, if you have a guaranteed cabin where the cruise line has allocated the cabin to you, the minute you get in, before you do anything else, decide if it's right for you. So look, are there cabins on either side? Is there any noisy venues? Is there any things you hadn't realized like obstructed views or whatever it is? Decide if the cabin is right for you based on first impressions. If it's not, don't do any of these checks. Go to guest services and try and see if you can move to a different cabin. Then for me, it's all around the bed. Now, obviously, the minute you walk in, you can tell if it's set up in the right format, you know, king bed if that's what you're wanting, two twin beds. If it's not laid out as you want, it's very simple. Write it on a list to ask your cabin steward to get it changed. That's one of the things I start to do is draw up a little list of the things I want to talk to the cabin steward about. For me, there's also a couple of other things I do. Now, I am particularly obsessed with pillow types. So I try and see if any of these are feather pillows. If they're not, I ask the cabin steward for a feather pillow. No matter what line I've been on, whether it's a fancy one with pillow concierge or not, they normally can track down a feather pillow. Also check if the bed is too hard or too soft. If it's too hard, they can normally bring you a little mattress protector, which will make it a bit softer. If it's too soft, they can often bring a plank or something underneath to make it a little bit firmer for you. Another little thing I do actually when I'm at the bed is check what my charging plugs are and if I'm gonna need any adapters or whatever. You know, not having chargers by the bed is a real pain. This one actually has USB ports, so that's pretty good. But have a look at the different plugs you've got. So over there on the desk, I can see I've got Euro style plugs and US style plugs. I have all those adapters. If not, again, something to ask the camera student if they can help you out with. One of the big changes to cruising post the shutdown is a new approach to mustard drill. So one of the things you need to do is check what you actually have to do for the mustard drill. Now normally that involves watching the safety video and then going to your respective muster station and just clocking in either with your cruise card or because I'm on Princess with my little medallion. So you have to watch that there. It'll also normally tell you where the muster station is. If it doesn't, it'll either be in the back of your cruise card or on the back of the door. Next, what I do is I check all the paperwork that's been left for me. Now, there's normally loads of paperwork, but there's a couple of really critical things that you need to do. So first of all, take a look at your daily program. So the Princess Pata in this case, and check things like what time lunch is, where you can eat for lunch, any particular big events that you might want to go to, uh, or you know stuff that you really want to plan uh, in book day around. The other thing that's really important to check is in the, the Princess Pata or equivalent or in any, in any of the other various brochures that are left if there are any really good deals. So there's often things for example on Wi-Fi deals or there might be drinks package deals. So check if there's any particular special offers that are being offered. So for example on my last cruise they're offering a 10% discount for your first spa, 20% if you book two spa treatments, 30% if you book three. So look for those and see if any of those are interesting because Embarkation Day will normally have special offers. The next thing you need to do is check if there's anything that you need to actually do on Embarkation Day. I've got a little thing here because I have booked a helicopter tour because I'm going in Alaska and there's certain weight restrictions and you have to fill this out within a certain deadline. So check if there's anything else that you absolutely need to do that day other than the mustard drill. The other thing that I like to look for is if there are any things linked to my status. So for example, here there is a letter from the Future Cruise and the Captain's Circle, so that's the Loyalty Club, and it actually lays down for me here what my actual perks are at my particular level on Princess, which I'm not a particularly high level, so I don't get a lot. Although I do get, for example, I didn't know this, I get a, a lounge access every evening for canapes, I've been invited to a party, and that gives me a list of a couple of other perks I've got. Prior to disembarkation, I get money off Wi-Fi, I get discounts off spa, I get discount off the photo gallery. Again, all linked to my status. Now, if you don't have one of these 
in your cabin. The thing that I would recommend you do is go and see the, the loyalty manager. They're often the same person as the future cruise sales and ask them, based on your status, what are the perks? Now, I've been on many ships where I hadn't realized the amount of perks I could get. So for example, on my last cruise, I discovered I could get canapes every evening, I can get certain drinks in the mini bar and so on. So that's the thing I always check, what perks am I gonna get? I also ask the cabin steward when they come to put on your list, what, based on the cabin grade that I've booked, extra perks do I get? Now I've booked this here, which is actually a mini suite, and I get very little extra benefits, but I just check with the cabin steward anyway. The other thing to check is you will, if you've pre-booked shore excursions, is take a look at your tickets, make sure that they're all what you booked, check the times, and it's everything as expected because you can then go and cancel or change those. They also, very importantly, check the cancellation time and date for those excursions uh, in case you change your mind. So there's one here that I booked and I'm not sure if I really want to do, and I can see that I have to have canceled it with no penalty by the day after tomorrow, by 6 p.m., for example, so know about those. Another thing I normally find in the daily program, which is really helpful, is it lists your itinerary, obviously, so you can check on the time you arrive and leave, but also really importantly, it tells you when the different gala nights or formal nights are, and that may make you change some of your plans. So for example, I plan to do special aid dining on a different night. I see it's formal night, I quite like to go to special aid dining on formal nights, so I'm gonna change that booking. So that's a really useful little thing in the daily program. Another thing I like to check is down here, which is the mini bar. Now, it's worth checking what is included and not included. So for example, I have a drinks package, which is part of the Princess Plus. However, it doesn't cover drinks in the mini bar. So really importantly, understand what is and isn't included if you've got a drinks package or with your cabin grade. So I have a mini bar that's completely empty, but I could choose to have it stocked and there's a list of uh, what it would cost to have it stocked here. That's again, something you can check with your cabin steward. Again, ask things like what's included in the mini bar and what else in the room do you have to pay for? That is really important to understand what within your cabin you can basically use and keep at no cost. Many people learned the hard way, for example, on Virgin Voyages, where everyone got very excited because they found these little packs of sort of sex aid -y toys thing. There's another little pack of sleep aids, and many people got very excited, used them, and suddenly discovered they were getting charges of $30 or $40 on their account because they weren't free. They had a charge to them, and everyone ended up paying for those. On my last cruise, though, there was many, many items which were left around the room because I had been upgraded into a suite. But if I'd taken any of those items home, there were quite big charges. So the bathrobes would have cost like $60. The umbrella would have, was $25. Early on, I take a look at the air conditioning, both to see if it's working well, and also what the sort of the noise is like. If you come into your cabin, you find it's really cranked down really low, but the room's hot, it probably means that it's not working that well. Now, I have had situations where I've come in and it doesn't really work that well, or it's relatively noisy. I've mentioned it to the cabin steward and they've sorted it out. A lot of people just kind of grin and bear it, but don't. I have actually been upgraded because of the air conditioning. I was once on a Princess Cruise, not this one, and there was big rattling in the air conditioning. I reported it, they sent an engineer, they just couldn't fix it because there was some unit that needs to be replaced and they couldn't get it to another port. And they actually moved me to a better cabin. So that shows the importance of checking the detail. Once that's all done, of course, it's time to unpack once your case has arrived. One of the things I actually like to do is understand where the storage is. Now, many, many cabins have all sorts of hidden storage. This cabin actually doesn't have that many, but often you might find stuff high up, but really importantly, of course, underneath the bed. So normally underneath the bed, big suitcases will fit under there, and that means you don't have them clutching up in the, the cupboards or somewhere in, in the room. But trying to find little secret bits of storage uh, is sometimes quite fun, and you'll often find quite a lot of it. I haven't tracked any down in here. A few bits and pieces in the storage area is, this actually has, humongous amounts of coat hangers, but many cruise lines don't give you many coat hangers. So if it's not enough coat hangers, just ask them. I know people who pack and bring coat hangers, but th they've got loads. Also the safe, make sure that the safe is working. So this safe is working uh, and it's really good because Princess didn't used to always have them. So check, have you got a safe? Does it work? If not, get it reset. Often the batteries can be low. And again, people haven't bothered. My philosophy is I've paid good money to be in a cabin, so it needs to be right. So doing these checks early on could make a really big difference. Upgrades, improvements, changes, perks, make sure it happens. 
If you want to know how to get a good cabin every single time, watch this video where I talk about how to get the best cabins and avoid the worst cabins no matter what grade you're in, starting with the one single tip that guarantees you will get a good cabin. This works for me every time. See you over there.